All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 22nd Municipal Planning Commission meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And we have some uh, Planning Commission members missing, so I'd like to um, hear from you how you would like to deal with that. Ellen makes a motion. I'd like to make the motion to excuse the three members that are not present. Thank you, Ellen. All in favor of Ellen's motion? That is carried. 3.1 minutes of the September 8th min, uh, meeting. How would you like to deal with them? Holly. I motion to accept the minutes. Holly makes a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Any concerns, questions? All in favor of that motion? That is carried. Call for post agenda items. Are there any to add to this agenda? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Go ahead. I'll make that motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you. All in favor of Greg's motion? That is carried. Subdivision 6, 6.1, Zachary, good morning. Or Jeff, Zachary, thank you. Good morning. And the first subdivision application is 2022-0007. Uh, it is to subdivide a 4.377 hectare parcel from the 31.43 hectare parcel located in northwest 15, 15, 15 west of 4. So there is an existing residential development on the parcel, existing house and storage shed that currently meet the setbacks, it is serviced by a dugout for potable water and a septic field. And yeah, applicant. As indicated, there's a pivot on the parcel, which does not encroach on the proposed subdivided parcel. The access is from Rain Road 153 and bylaw number 2018-21 uh, says that the subdivision authority may only approve one subdivision from an subdivided quarter section in the Agricultural General Plains District. There was a historical subdivision completed on the quarter for agricultural purposes where the east half of the quarter was subdivided along existing EID right of way and consolidated with the adjacent parcel. So therefore there were no new parcels created. For this reason, it would be considered an unsubdivided quarter section. Uh, comments from circulation uh, from Alberta Transportation, the EID and Fortis Alberta had no objections to the subdivision and conditions to be considered. The first is that all outstanding property taxes shall be paid to the county. Second, that the, the a applicant enter into development agreement for the county to register uh, and to have that registered concurrently with the final plan against the title. And third, that the copies of any utility right of way plans, easements and or agreements to be registered as a requirement for any effective utilities uh, to the county prior to the subdivision's registration with Alberta land titles. Reserves are not required as for MGA 663A and recommend that the NBC approve the subdivision with conditions for the following reasons, consistent with the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, the MDP and land use bylaw, that it is suitable for the purposes as intended. Thank you. <clears throat> You've all heard the recommendation. How do you wish to handle this subdivision? Are there any? Go ahead, Neil. Yeah, being that there was no objection to it, I would make that motion. Okay. Any questions, comments? All in favor of Neil's motion? That is carried. Thank you, Zach. 6.2. So the second subdivision is made by the same applicant for a parcel that is across the road. It is to subdivide a 2.98 hectare parcel 
from the 64.44 hectare parcel of the northeast 1615, 15 west of four. Um, on the proposed subdivided parcel, there is a house, a modular home, a quonset shop, and several sheds. There's also a hay storage and shed that currently overlaps the subdivision boundary, which will be moved uh, upon the subdivision's approval. Land use by law allows for a maximum of two dwellings on parcels that are less than 32.4 hectares. However, the house and modular home on the proposed subdivision are three meters and five meters closer to the road than the further 30 meter setback allowed in the agricultural general district. Therefore, MPC would have to grant a waiver for this variance. The house mobile home currently being serviced by the dugout located across the road in Northwest 1515, 15 West of four for potable water. And both dwellings are serviced by individual septic fields. Access is from Range Road 153. The applicant is proposing a new pivot system and that pivot system will not encroach onto the proposed subdivided parcel. Uh, with bylaw subdivision authority bylaw 2018-21, uh, they may improve only one subdivision from one subdivided quarter and in this case it meets that requirement. From circulation there were uh, two Alberta transportation, the EID and Fortis Alberta, there were no objections to the subdivision. And conditions to be cons considered. The first is that all outstanding property taxes shall be paid. And second, that the applicant registers an easement for the conveyance of potable water from the dwelling dwellings to the dugout on the quarter across the road. And third, that the development, a development agreement be entered into with the county of Newell, which shall be registered concurrently with the final plans uh, against the title. And fourth, that any uh, the applicant supplies copies of any utility, utility right of ways, easements, ends, or agreements. And yeah, you know, prior to the subdivision's registration with Alberta land titles. Here again, reserves are not applicable as per MG 663A. And we recommend that MPC approve with conditions uh, for the following reasons. That's consistent with Saskatchewan Regional Plan, the NDP, and these bylaw, and that is and we are satisfied that it is suitable for the purpose is intended. So, thank you. Thank you. I think you, I have a question. I think you um, mentioned, um, but I just want to be clear. Um, according to the map, the property line runs directly center through that large Quonset type building. Did you say that they were moving that? Um, so the applicant has stated that they will move it. They will move it. Yeah. Will we be following up to make sure that that action happens? If we want to make sure that uh, that action does happen, it, it, it's more than reasonable that MPC could decide to make that a condition of the subdivision approval. Uh, that that way, um, you know, it's pretty cut and dry uh, as we track the conditions of approval uh, and, and we fulfill all those before we endorse the subdivision. Uh, we, we would just then request the applicant to prove that the, the, the building has been moved to an appropriate location prior to signing off on the endorsement, if that's the wish of MPC. So I think we would be negligent if we didn't. Um, the other question I have is water. Um, I would assume that we suggested the Newell services um, and no uptake on that, obviously. No. Maria did indicate she discussed potable water servicing and, and the applicant's ability to register for the rural water program and he was going to take it under consideration. Uh, he still has uh, eight, nine days to get in and get his application uh, in for the $1,500 service. But uh, in the event that he decides not to, uh, we thought it was appropriate to have that uh, registered easement uh, across the road to continue the water service from the dugout. Holly, question. Uh, first, a comment. This used to be a dairy farm, so they have their own system with chlorine that they've been using for many years. I, I happen to know that they're because, but I don't know how good the system is, but they do already have a system based on the previous. I'm just curious as to the very unusual shape of that subdivision. Is there a particular reason? 
uh, was to allow the new uh, system that, uh, to, that was going to be installed. Uh, the reasons for the unusual shape exactly, we're not completely sure of, but. Why is there a jag right by the road? Is that based on historical where the yard was? Because right by the road, there's a, a jag. What was the reason for that? Mm -hmm. At, at, at one point, and, and Zachary might have some history on it, there, there was land purchased. My guess is quite possibly, and, and I don't have the exact history on it, is, is we likely purchased land for the EID drainage partnership uh, along here. And, and just based on where that line takes off, either um, the, the drainage north of there, north of that approach is kind of a break point that we didn't need to drain, or the, the um, owner wasn't uh, uh, amicable to losing some of those uh, mature trees in front of the road, their house adjacent to the road, is my guess. Yeah. I also had a question about the unusual shape and uh, it would be the on the bottom of the picture, that point that crosses the access road and goes into the farm. I don't, uh, I don't understand why that would be included as part of it. And I can foresee a problem down the road with two different owners of farm and acreage. And I just wonder if that does that create a potential for an issue down the road? You know, it's interesting. They 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 have uh, uh, notified us that they are um, in, going to be installing a new pivot system. I'm guessing that uh, if the map zooms out, you'll see they've got some dry corners. I'm guessing that would include some type of corner arm system. Why it is drawn that specific way, I'm not positive. That road definitely goes back to uh, an oil site uh, in the back. So um, the, the lease on that um, oil and gas site would um, be taken care of and, and transferred to both of these titles. So the access through there, if it was for an oil field, wouldn't be an issue because that would just transfer to both titles. Now, uh, a farmer trying to access through there, you're right, that could be a, a bit contentious. Um, but there is a, an approach to the remnant parcel off of the same road. So they do have legal access elsewhere on the parcel um, for, for the landowner. Um, I, I, I also questioned a little bit why that why it would cross the road there and maybe not be on the north side um, of the road. Um, but, but again, that, that was the applicant's um, uh, wish to to kind of um, satisfy their their new pivot layout and design and the irrigation on the quarter section. Um, we, we could definitely, um, you know, have time to table this and readdress the applicant with that and, and see if, you know, they would have interest in moving that to say the north side of the access road and, and take it take it to a future meeting um, if that would be the wish of MPC. And then there is also the question of the jagged pointed edge, you know, why that's not drawn as a straight line. There's probably a reason, but so maybe that is the direction for this application. Holly? Well, I'm curious as well if that's an access road for a, a Torxon was not notified in this application. So would, is there no well, is this an abandoned well? Because it says an abandoned well. So there's no active well that be accessing as far as we know. You know, it sure looks like an active well. It sure looks like a, a really well used road. I, I, I'd have to uh, follow up on the notification and, and see um, if and why Torxon was left out on, on the utility company uh, side of the notifications. It could just be farmers. You give farmers a road, they're going to drive on it. So, you know. So I think there's enough questions here and um, uh, unfortunate, unfortunate for the applicant that he didn't come in or she didn't come in to answer these questions. So um, I would entertain a motion to, to table at this time based on the questions. Great. Go ahead. I'd like to make that motion to uh, table this application approval uh, because of the outstanding questions that we have. All in favor of Greg's motion? That is carried. Dan, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to ask if, if we're tabling it because of our questions, do we have to uh, direct our staff to get answers to questions or what's the process that's a, after that's this? That's a given. He'll, he'll seek those. At, mm -hmm. 
just to clarify, uh, the, the, the two kind of uh, questions that require clarification are, are this kind of triangle in the bottom, uh, the crossing of the access road and how that's meant to facilitate the irrigation as well. Are, are we talking about this jag up here on the west side? Yes. Uh, okay. Yep. I, I, absolutely. The, the, this one, I, you know, you can kind of glean that uh, the, the pivot arm probably stops here and you can see that this portion's irrigated, but we'll definitely follow up on both those um, um, aspects with the applicant and, and we'll encourage the applicant to attend the, the next MPC meeting and, and answer any further questions that, that come up from yeah, MPC as well. We do have members missing and there may be more questions. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Seven development permits. 7.1. Zachary. Yes. So this development permit, uh, 2022 is to construct a 279 square meter addition to a 669 square meter existing shop for irrigation and equipment sales op operation. It is the site is located north of the city of Brooks, on the north side of Township Road 192S and south of Highway 1. In the business rural district, an accessory building over 500 square meters to discretionary use and the total square footage of the building of the addition would be 948 square meters. Therefore, um, it must be approved by MPC. We recommend that the uh, development permit be approved uh, for the following reasons. Uh, it complies with NDP and IDP. Uh, it is suitable for the intended purposes and there were no objections received for this development permit. So the conditions of the approval would be that it is effective as of October 12th, 2022, must be located as shown and built according to the description provided. It must obtain all construction permits and that any structure located is not located on any right of way or easement, that the minimum setbacks of 30 meters from the front, uh, three meters from the side and 40 meters from the Alberta Transportation Highway right of way be maintained and the construction must start before October 12th of 2023. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions, comments? How would you like to proceed with this application? Dan. Was there any response from the, uh, from the Brooks IDP committee or was no response the response? And they had a response saying that they had no objections to, and they no no need for a, a meeting. Neil, mm -hmm. I think that's a new way building, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll make that motion. It's okay. a perfect spot, lots of room. Yeah, and it's great to see um, businesses prosper and grow. Absolutely. Any other discussion? Um, Neil's motion is to approve with um, conditions as laid out by staff. All in favor of that motion? That is carried. Um, I would like to um, go back to 6.2 and just ask MPC if um, they agreed with my comments and ask staff to add it as a condition of approval that that building be moved and not severed in half on the title. I see nods, Holly. Yes, I would support putting that as a condition. Okay. I see nods around the table. Do you need a motion or just, is that good enough, Jeff? I don't think we need a motion. We can just bring it back on a future RFD um, when, when we lift this up from the table to talk about it next MPC meeting. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Dan? Okay. Thank you. All right, moving along. Post agenda items, we had none. Any need for in camera? Seeing no hands. Question period. Anybody have questions? Todd, you're good on your end? Yes, we are. No questions. Right, thank, thank you so much. I will adjourn this MPC meeting.